computer. Hello and welcome to Issues and Answers, a production of the Government Information Service. I am Johnny Bissett Joseph. IMSAS, the International Maritime Organization Mandatory Audit Scheme. As a member state of the International Maritime Organization, St. Lucia is obligated to participate in a mandatory IMO audit. The audit in turn provides St. Lucia with a comprehensive and objective assessment of how effectively it administers and implement mandatory IMO instruments which are covered by the scheme. And today, to tell us a little bit more about the scheme and how St. Lucia actually benefits from being part of the scheme, I'm joined by Mr. Christopher Alexander, who is the Director of Maritime Affairs at the St. Lucia ANC Ports Authority. So first of all, thank you for joining us today, Mr. Alexander. Okay. And thank you for inviting um, SLASPA um, to come and give some information um, based on the, on the audit. Okay. A and again, um, the audit is being done by various member states of mm -hmm. the IMO. Mm -hmm. And um, before it was um, voluntary. Mm -hmm. However, the IMO has now made that audit system mandatory for all member states within the IMO. Okay. And St. Lucia as a member state right now, we mm -hmm. are obligated to undergo that, um, that audit. Okay. And the Ministry of Infrastructure, which is our parent ministry, um, they actually sign on with the IMO for the signature to be audited um, in May, on May the 7th. Mm -hmm. And coming out of that audit, it's basically like a SWOT analysis, wherein we will determine our strengths, our weaknesses, opportunities, and threats within the maritime sector of St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. And um, maritime is not basically SLASPA or my department. Mm -hmm. Maritime is like a, a cross-sectional area of St. Lucia. It entails the, the fisheries department, mm -hmm. um, the fishers, it entails um, tourism through um, cruise ships coming into our country carrying our visitors. Mm -hmm. It also entails, entails the environmental sector as well mm -hmm. in terms of NEMO, mm -hmm. in terms of solid waste because um, vessels carry um, waste um, as well. Mm -hmm. So you have all those various agencies as well as the enforcement um, being the police and more um, um, particularly the Marine Police Unit, mm -hmm. which is our, almost our, co our Coast Guard. Mm -hmm. So you have all those agencies coming together right now and they will be audited um, by the IMO mm -hmm. to see as to how St. Lucia is implementing the conventions that we have signed on to. Okay. And again, that will again um, also affect in terms of our economic um, lifeblood, which is shipping, mm -hmm. as well um, of St. Lucia. Okay, brilliant. Now, um, one of the thing, things that you, you, you mentioned there is the fact that St. Lucia is a member of the IMO. First of all, just tell us a little bit about what exactly is the IMO and exactly when did we actually become a member? Okay, great. So the IMO is International Maritime Organization, mm -hmm. and they are almost like the sister organization of the United Nations. Oh, okay. So you have the United Nations, mm -hmm. um, um, they promulgate um, different conventions and laws, and then you have the IMO, which is maritime based. Mm -hmm. And in the late 70s, um, St. Lucia actually became a member of the IMO. Mm -hmm. And um, the IMO basically, they produce different um, conventions, and then the member states are supposed to bring those conventions into national legislation. Mm -hmm. So our legal draft department has a critical role to play in terms of not just signing onto the conventions, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because the conventions, they have obligations that you have to adhere to when you sign onto the convention. Mm -hmm. So St. Lucia um, is part of our obligation to follow up and for us to put that into our national legislation. Mm -hmm. So when a ship comes to St. Lucia, for example, the same law would apply across the board. Okay. So it's like the same law applies to all member states. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter if you are the U.S. or St. Lucia, mm -hmm. it's the, the same law applies. Um, hence, you may get developing countries because of, of their, their finances. They are able to 
if they implement those legislation. Mm -hmm. And you may find small St. Lucia, mm -hmm. we still have to implement the obligations of the convention. Mm -hmm. But it's a matter of, like, of safety and security. Mm -hmm. um, and then we will be telling the, the ships there, um, even if you enter the US, you can feel safe. If you come to St. Lucia, your boat will be safe. Mm -hmm. Our waters are charted. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have security within our ports under the ISPS code. So the IMO is basically that international body okay. that protects um, shipping mm -hmm. and the maritime en uh, environment as well. Okay, brilliant. Now, again, going back to the audit scheme, um, I, as you were saying, it's now mandatory, but I believe that before it was voluntary. Yes. It, so exactly why did it become mandatory? And, and, and in regards to when it was voluntary, was everybody actually still doing the audit or was it a case of some member states weren't doing it? Well, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> because, I'm, I mean, most persons, when we hear about an audit, some persons have, have a schism mm -hmm. about audits. So mm -hmm. you find they were not getting enough buy-in mm -hmm. um, for it being voluntary. Right. And, and when we realize in terms of the benefit that can be accrued, mm -hmm. um, when persons um, underwent the, the, the audit, mm -hmm. so they said, okay, right now, um, all countries now have to be audited because some countries they were trying to delay um, being being audited. Okay. And then the audit in itself, it's not just to expose your country in terms of what your weaknesses are. Mm -hmm. It's also an opportunity for, for your country to benefit mm -hmm. because um, you can show, okay, here's where my weaknesses are. Um, so maybe we need to allocate more resources in that area mm -hmm. as well. And then the, if you can show the shipping community mm -hmm. that have a safe port, mm -hmm. more ships are likely to come to your country. Right. Um, if you can show that, that my environment is clean, mm -hmm. more tourists are likely to come to your country and mm -hmm. utilize your, your beaches, knowing that you have no marine pollution on your beaches or mm -hmm. on your seas. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of win-win situation in terms of, of doing that, that audit, mm -hmm. even as well as um, in terms of um, opening up um, training schools. Right. So if you realize, okay, St. Lucia now, we have met all those obligations now, more likely more investors will come in and say, okay, we want to open a maritime school mm -hmm. in St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. And then our seafarers right now will also benefit. Okay. And then you have a decrease in, in unemployment because mm -hmm. right now in St. Lucia, you can train persons right now and you can certify them right now. Right. They can go and work on the cruise ships mm -hmm. and in mm -hmm. other boats as well. So there's a lot of benefits mm -hmm. to St. Lucia. Okay, that's brilliant. Um, now, so you actually told us a little bit about why it's actually important yeah. to be audited. Um, but how is St. Lucia administrating the mandatory instruments right now? Well, uh, as of now, yeah. we've signed on to basically the, the mandatory convention. So you okay. have the convention that the IMO actually brings out. Mm -hmm. And then St. Lucia have to put in, um, make national laws based on those conventions. Mm -hmm. And the issue at hand, um, even many of the Caribbean islands, including St. Lucia, mm -hmm. is in terms of a, a, a insufficient maritime legal drafters. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have to have a skill in terms of not any lawyer, mm -hmm. but you have to have a legal drafting background. Mm -hmm. So those persons they right now have to draft those laws so that we can implement it in St. Lucia. Okay. And we can also have an enforcement arm as well. So that's where the weakness is, is in terms of St. Lucia and many other Caribbean islands in terms of putting those conventions into national law. Mm -hmm. Then you can have fines, you can have penalties, mm -hmm. and you can have policies as well based on your national legislation. Okay. So we're not all there, but we're getting there right now. Okay, brilliant. Yeah. Well, we're going to just stop for a little break, and then when we come back, we're going to talk some more about the audit scheme and such like. Sure. Okay? Yes. So join us after the break. Family time is a healthy time, and a healthy family eats smart. Local fish and seafood from fishermen and farmers that you trust with your family's health is always fresh. Choose fresh seafood because it's packed with nutrients. St. Lucia's fish and seafood producers meet every government standard for health and safety, high quality, fresh local food products straight from the fisherman to you. Choose St. Lucian fish and seafood at your local grocers and choose a healthy lifestyle for your entire family. I use fresh local fish right there from the fisheries department. Eat fresh, buy local. 
St. Lucia's fishermen produce an abundance of fresh foods, highly nutritious and incredibly tasty. Together when it's most important. Healthy families. Buy fresh, eat fresh. Welcome back to Issues and Answers. Today I am joined by Mr. Christopher Alexander, who again is the Director of Maritime Affairs at SLASPA. And we are talking about the International Maritime Organization Mandatory Audit Scheme. That's a bit of a mouthful. Yes, <laughs> um, so Mr. Alexander, tell us a little bit about um, the event that took place on the 7th of May. Exactly what, how did that relate to the audit that's actually um, in the process of taking place right now? Well, the, the actual meeting, um, the IMO sent in three auditors. Mm -hmm. um, those are professionals um, trained by the IMO. Mm -hmm. And they came to St. Lucia basically to engage the different sectors of government, of NGOs as well. Mm -hmm. And basically to sensitize them in terms of um, the, what the audit was all about. Right. And they went to the various ministries and um, had a one-on-one -on -one interaction with them as to what their concerns were, um, how they were implementing the various laws and conventions, mm -hmm. and what areas they needed assistance in, in terms of ensuring that those were made uh, more efficient. Mm -hmm. And coming out of that engagement, a report will be sent to the Ministry, Minister of Infrastructure and the PS as to what areas, what was Anusha doing um, in terms of um, efficiently mm -hmm. and the other areas that we needed to have food engagement with mm -hmm. and there will be a three to four year window mm -hmm. wherein the IMO will give Anusha the opportunity mm -hmm. for us to put measures in place to correct any deficiencies or shortcomings oh, okay. That, um, that obtained um, during the, the audit. Mm -hmm. So it will, we have a chance right now to actually get ourselves 100% um, in um, compliance with the IMO um, conventions and mm -hmm. what we have signed on to. Okay. All right. Now, you, uh, again, you had talked about um, the expected benefits for St. Lucia because you talked about um, we could actually bring ourselves up to a standard by, by way of training and such things yes. and, and such like. But can you tell me very generally what are the main areas of the audit? Because I know there's actually a lot of different areas yes. that are actually going to be to um, yes. touched on. Okay. So they'll be looking at a few major um, conventions. For mm -hmm. example, we have MAPOL mm -hmm. or Marine Pollution. Mm -hmm. And again, they'll be engaging um, the NEMO solid waste. Mm -hmm. um, Berkai, you know, we have a huge oil de depot at, at Berkai. Mm -hmm. They'll see how we, um, what our responses will be mm -hmm. if there's an oil spill. Mm -hmm. So we have already signed on to MAPOL and now you have the air pollution as well. Okay. In terms of when the ships come in there, mm -hmm. what fuel do they use? What's the level of sulfur content? Mm -hmm. So that'd be one area they'll be looking at. Mm -hmm. The other critical area will be in terms of what we call standard of training for certified watch keepers mm -hmm. and that will um show in how we certify our seafarers because mm -hmm. right now because of our, our unemployment issue mm -hmm. we're trying to see how we can get persons trained to go and work on, on the cruise ships oh, to go and work on the um on uh, our local boats as well mm -hmm. um, as of now you have persons going to um, other countries like uh, jamaica mm -hmm. antigua mm -hmm. to do that type of training mm -hmm. So if you can do that trading locally, it will save persons, uh, I mean, huge amounts of money. Yeah. So they will say, okay, how do we, how are we going about implementing that? And how we can improve upon that implementation? Mm -hmm. So that's the other um, critical area. And the other one I would like to mention mm -hmm. is in terms of um, the load line and tonnage. Mm -hmm. Basically, all ships have um, what we call a load line. Okay. And basically tells you what amount of cargo um, that ship can carry. Mm -hmm. So there's a line that goes around the ship, mm -hmm. and if that line is submerged, mm -hmm. you know that the, the ship is overloaded. Okay. So that's something that's okay, how are we implementing those laws? So those are, are mm -hmm. three of, of the major areas that will be visited. Mm -hmm. And the final one will be in terms of what we call safety of life at sea. Okay. 
okay. in terms of how um, um, would the Coast Guard respond mm -hmm. in terms of a search and rescue. Mm -hmm. So when our officials go missing, mm -hmm. how would the Coast Guard uh, um, um, react to it there? Mm -hmm. Do they have the requisite resources right. to react to it there? Because you want to ensure that when our boaters go out, mm -hmm. they know that there is an agency mm -hmm. that can come and assist them mm -hmm. when they're out at sea. So all those areas will be um, examined mm -hmm. and again it will determine what our weaknesses are, mm -hmm. what our strengths are and how they can and how we can improve upon those areas. Okay. Well, to be honest, you're, you're giving me an education here. So um, <laughs> let me just ask you, though, uh, would those relate directly to the nine mandatory um, instruments that are to be audited as well? Yes, exactly. That relates straight back to that? Y yes. Okay. Yeah, that, yes. All right. No problem. Um, tell me a little bit about, as well, um, the different, are there different people, you were saying that, especially for the event that happened there, are there different people that, would be, that are also coming in, apart from the auditors, for the that came in for the, the the event as well to take part in the audit okay so in in terms of the main imo um, auditors mm -hmm. um what we've done right now like i said um we went across um the the, the spectra in terms of the maritime sector mm -hmm. and we brought in um the shipping agents we brought them on board as well okay um people like um the the, the cox and companies the the oh, okay. the, the huge other uh, huge um agencies they mm -hmm. are in as well mm -hmm. um, we also brought in um ngos mm -hmm. because they have a part to play in terms of the maritime sector mm -hmm. so it's not just a government based um a meeting mm -hmm. it's a meeting where we want to touch the, the lives of every organization, Ministry of Finance, mm -hmm. the AIDS office, um, mm -hmm. um, the tourism sector. Mm -hmm. um, so basically we want everybody to have an input so that will chart the way forward mm -hmm. for St. Lucia maritime sector. Okay. And it's important that government get uh, um, the, the information mm -hmm. that they can reprioritize, mm -hmm. they can allocate resources, um, both human resource and technical as well, mm -hmm. to ensure that St. Lucia maximizes Okay, we are a port of a port of entry, right? And ninety percent okay. of our, our, our trade is, mm -hmm. is, is via is via shipping. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and mm -hmm. then if our ports are, are hampered, yeah. our ports are not efficient, our mm -hmm. ports are not fully equipped. Mm -hmm. You can see the whole country, the whole island will mm -hmm. suffer because we're not having the requisite resources in place mm -hmm. for us to um, for us to improve upon shipping. Right. Um, generally. Okay, all right. Now, we're running out of time, but before we do go, I just want um, to know, is there anything you'd like to add in regards to the audit? Because as I said, this to me is really interesting <laughs> to me because this is an education to me. Yes. Um, the scheme is something I didn't know about and such like. So I'm sure the audience would like to know more as well. So, I mean, is there anything that you would like to share with them in regards to the audit, even in saying, um, again, to just reiterate about why an audit like this is so important to St. Lucia on a whole as well? Yes. Uh, again, um, the, the, the critical rationale mm -hmm. for the audit is to determine in terms of and to let the, the world know because mm -hmm. the audit, the results of the audit will be um, on, on the web. Mm -hmm. So persons can view it and say, OK, right. should I come to St. Lucia? Mm -hmm. Should my boat come to St. Lucia? Mm -hmm. Should my cruise ship come to St. Lucia? Mm -hmm. OK? Mm -hmm. Should I um, uh, um, invest in terms of the maritime schools in St. Lucia? Right. So that audit will give us, in, in terms of uh, um, show how op transparent we are mm -hmm. and how um, um, open we are in terms of accepting those other um, opportunities, mm -hmm. um, commercial, employment-wise into St. Lucia. If that's not done, mm -hmm. think of what will be the, the repercussions in right. terms of boats not feeling, feeling safe mm -hmm. to enter St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. But since there we are right now, we're not mm -hmm. conforming to international mm -hmm. standards. Mm -hmm. And again, it's an obligation. The conventions will sign on to buy St. Lucia, yeah. and it's our it's government's obligation to mm -hmm. ensure that the laws are there to support the convention that we have signed on to. Right. Well, thank you, Mr. Alexander. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, and please come back again because <laughs> to me this is so interesting. This is really good. This I'd is really love good to. stuff. I'd okay. Love to. So thank you for joining us. Yes. And thank you everybody out there for joining us on Issues and Answers. Do stay tuned to the National Television Network. However, for now, this is Jolene B. St. Joseph saying goodbye.